Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint to draw this picture, which is a picture of a red blood cell. So this has already been drawn using PowerPoint, which means it's very easy for me to break down the different components. So first of all, let's drag each different component out. And you can see that this uh, whole picture is actually made up of four different ovals which have been colored slightly differently and have some effects in each of the ovals. I'm going to start by inserting the basic shape which in this instance is an oval. So let's draw an oval. So the first thing I want to do is to actually um, take away the color. So I will right click select on Format Shape and select No Fill. This leaves us with the outline. I'm going to now copy and paste so that I have four different ovals. So Control c hold it down and press V as well so it's copy and paste. And now I'm just going to drag these other ovals out. The shape doesn't matter at this point, I just want to put them to the side first and let's focus on this one. So first thing I'll do is try to draw or to trace the outline of the largest oval here. And it does not have to be exact but try to get it quite close to your original picture. Right, so I'm quite happy with this now. Let's move this aside and then I'm going to color this to make it very similar to this. For coloring, you can either choose a color or you can actually use the eyedropper function which is quite useful because it tries to recapitulate the color of what you're copying quite closely. So for fill, I'm going to select solid fill and then let's go to the eyedropper here and you just place the eyedropper over the original color and it mimics your color, your new color will be filled up using that color. You also notice that there's a blue outline which I shall get rid of, so I'm going to click no line. And the next thing I want to do now is to give it this interesting three-dimensional shadow. So for shadow, I will choose effects and I will select inner shadow. Doesn't matter which one you select because you can vary the angle. And let's just move the angle to where I want. And I'm going to drag the shadow to a thicker distance. You can actually move this anywhere you want if you play around with the angle. And you can also blur it, which gives it a more realistic appearance. So I'm going to blur it and then I'm going to make it a little bit more transparent so that it's not so dark. Do note that you can also change the color of the shadow if you wish. So that is the first shape and now let's copy the second shape which is a flatter oval and I'm going to rotate this as well. So same thing, I'm drawing this as a bigger oval now because this shape I've actually blurred uh, the edges of the shape using an effect and that actually shrinks the original shape so I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger because I know that I'm going to have to blur it and shrink it later on. Okay, so this is the rough shape and again I'm going to color this so let's go back to fill and this is also a solid fill and same thing I'm going to use an eyedropper to copy the color there and also I'm going to remove the outline. Now to get this blurred um, periphery it's also under effects and you can, let's close the shadow and we can select this effect called soft edges. You just have to simply uh, drag this bar to adjust the size of your soft edge and this is roughly about correct. Right, the next oval is again rotated and it's larger. And again, you can see here that I have used soft edges, so I'm going to have to create a slightly larger oval. And again, I'm going to superimpose this on my original one so that I can get the dimensions as close as possible. I'm happy with that. And 
Again, we go through the same motions, solid fill, eyedropper, remove the outline, and then go on to soft edges and shrink them in. Right? So now for the last shape, let's again superimpose this again. And also you can see that um, again, there's soft edges, so I have to make this shape larger. So I think that's about right. Now this is a little bit more complex. If I click on the original shape, we can see that this is not a solid fill, but a gradient fill. It is a radial type of gradient, and you can actually see that there are three different color stops. If you want to make it exactly the same, of course, this might not be there in the original picture that you're copying. Um, but, you know, I can try to copy this and make it as close as possible. For example, you can see here that this is dark red. Position is 90%. This is red. Position is about 34%. And this is dark red again with a position of 0%. You can copy this or you can try to get it as close as possible. So let's click back on this picture and we'll go to gradient fill. Let's see now. There is, this is dark red. Okay, so 90% is about there. This is roughly about 30 odd percent and this is dark red at 0%. So actually this, these settings are already sort of pre-filled. Again, I'm going to remove the blue line and there are two other effects here. If you look at the list of effects, we have soft edges, which you can see, and we also have shadow. So let me first adjust the soft edge. And this one has actually gone in quite a bit, a bit more than with the others. And now I'm going to go for inner shadow again. So always choose the inner one. And let's make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to adjust the angle, which is somewhere around here. And I'm going to blur this shadow and probably also make it a little bit more transparent. So this is quite similar now to the original picture. And now we can proceed to assemble our new picture. Before we assemble this, I just want to have a quick word about layers. It is important to know the layers as in which layer is on top and which layer is below as you assemble your picture. For example, when I move this and it's actually below that, that is not correct. So I have to then make sure that this layer comes on top of that layer. So I'm going to bring this to the front. And now when I do this, you can see that it nicely falls on top. And similarly for this one, if I drag it here, it's actually behind. But I want this to be on top. So this one has to be brought to front as well. So that now when I drag this, it goes and you can see it as the topmost layer. So let's now assemble our layers. We have the shine layer. We have the next layer that covers the shine. And we have the final layer that gives it the concave appearance. And again, let me just go through the original picture so that you can compare the two and see how similar they are. So this is how you draw and assemble a realistic illustration in PowerPoint.